What's going on fam squad professional Asian out here back with yet another new video and today we're featuring my newest Asian car So this is my new rear-wheel drive v8 Camry now. While I'm not exactly the most professional Asian out here This thing definitely is It's got an F on the side of the fender and that F it stands for flex So this car's got a 5 liter v8 churning out an American like growl of the tune of about 400 brake horsepower 400 brake horsepower in a mid-sized Toyota sedan developed by the people that brought you things like uh, sushi and hentai. Toyota wasn't exactly known for its outrageously high horsepower vehicles, but back in the 90s, you had to tune your Supra with a potato chip in order to squeeze out a little bit more power. See, back in the 90s, Lexus had a sport coupe called the SC. It came with a watered-down inline 6 2JZ, which was similar to what you could find in the naturally aspirated Mark IV Supra. Some iterations also came with a 4 liter V8 found in the LS400. So fast forward a few years later and Lexus decides to show its teeth with a prototype 2nd gen IS powered by a 4.6 V8 barred from, yet again, the LS sedan. And through research and design and a couple of bouts through the Fuji Speedway and the Nürburgring, this car's sole purpose was to finally take on the likes of BMW's golden child, which was the BMW M3. See back in the old days, hearing about a Lexus go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an M3 was a little bit odd. You kind of wanted to see what would happen. It's like those two girls in your group of friends. Y you know the type, the, the ones that are like, you know, one bottle away from making out with one another. So the F designation in this car's name stands for one of Japan's most famous racetracks, and that's the Fuji Speedway. And like I mentioned earlier, this car along with the other F cars like the GSF, the RCF, and the Walmart Ferrari, uh, they've all had countless miles on this course. Lexus probably also picked Fuji because they kind of needed something to rally behind. Uh, a letter that was a lot better than the letter M or the letter S because you know there's there's nothing more there's nothing more powerful than the F word. So going to the interior the dash hasn't exactly changed too much from the standard IS of the same generation. The uh, trim around this area seems to be some sort of diamond camo type and the needle clusters give off that signature blue to help remind you that just because you have the same car as a high school sophomore doesn't mean you can still hang out in the parking lot and offer free rides to the local vape shot at dismissal time. So like one of the biggest reconfigurations that the ISF has in contrast to like its more common IS250 and IS350 cousins is the, uh, the two front seats. Just look how bolstered those things are. Up front you've got these no-nonsense bolstered seats that hug you a lot harder than the dad that you barely knew. And if you guys take a peek here in the back, Lexus went away with that three-person configuration in favor of a two-person configuration. So you got two bolstered seats in the back which kind of model after the front bolstered seats. You know, just in case you decide to do spirited driving with a full passenger car. So if you think about it, in a sense, the ISF is kind of like one of those fancy European four-door coupe cars. The AMG GT four-door coupe. Here's the thing, though, about the back seats. Someone can still ride bitch if they want. The only problem is that uh, it, it's kind of unsafe because the, the middle person doesn't have a seat belt. And regardless, you wouldn't want to sit in the back anyway because, check this out. This transmission tunnel is like, it's, it's this high. So if you're a guy and you're riding bitch in the middle, you will literally have no ball sack room. Now guys, to my favorite part, let's talk about that V8 engine, which lurks so awesomely underneath the hood of this car. So Lexus did their due diligence and ended up putting a Coyote in a family sedan before Ford even did it in the Mustang. A five liter V8 with enough power to literally squeeze pavement like a lemon, while at the same time letting you grin from the fact that you know this car probably won't break down on you for the next 20 years. Coming from a, from a Japanese sedan, that just sounds absolutely ridiculous. That's bonkers. I like that sound so much. You know, because think about it. See, in current times, manufacturers these days are trying to find a way to step down in displacement while adding forced induction like tur turbocharging or supercharging. Sure, they'll probably make good and easy power from like adding a potato chip, but just like any machine, the more moving parts and the more things you add on to the complication of the development of the engine, the more prone to issues they'll face. So let's go off topic for like two seconds. Let me talk about the new Supra. So unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure many of you know, the Supra has been one of the world's most sought out after cars. And it built a legacy even in the time that it was still in its fourth generation. Fast forward almost 20 years and here pops up the newest fifth gen, which is unapologetically comprised of stuff from BMW spare parts bin. Now, while I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I just wanted to say that in my opinion, the actual successor to the Supra has actually already existed even before the reveal of the recent A90. So this is Yukiku Yaguchi. 
Not too many people know that he was behind the projects like the Supra, from the first gen, back when they were still sharing designations with the Celica, all the way to the fourth gen, there were the A80. That being said, he was there even during the inception of the Lexus brand itself. Jump nearly a decade later and here he is at the helm and development of the Lexus ISF. So the car that I'm sitting in right now actually has some sort of legit DNA ties to the A80 Supra. Just forget about the whole fact that it's powered by a V8 and stuff. I mean, that, that's not important right now at the moment. And that was really what the ISF was all about. And this is why the whole F Division brand behind Lexus was rallying behind it. It was to bring out a performance division and a rather lackluster luxury brand that was more geared towards retired people and fake drug dealers. While the original ISF hasn't exactly been in production for a while, we see the flag carried out in Lexus's current lineup, which is the RCF, the LFA, the GSF, and more closely related to the Supra in terms of look, uh, the LC500. And yeah, my bad, I didn't mean to go completely off topic, but I just kinda had to say that since I'm actually sitting in an ISF right now. See, here's the thing I liked the most about the second gen IS. It was like one of them, it was one of the cars that really looked good from just about any angle that you looked at it. Like the only other cars that actually looked good from any other angle were like the S2000, the R34, and the mid 90s Ford Explorer. And even though it was purely aesthetic, the quad tip exhaust really set this car apart from other performance cars in its era. It almost kind of looked like a Ferrari California, and that car also had fake tips. To the untrained eye, the ISF actually may look like any other regular IS sedan, but there's little sudden cues that you can actually take a look at from the exterior, which helps you distinguish it a lot better than a regular IS type of sedan. So yeah, one of the easiest ways to tell between an ISF and a regular IS is this ginormous huge side vent scoop that you see here. That kind of helps the engine breathe a little bit when you're blasting through the streets of Tokyo and like, you know, North Korea. So let's take a brief walk around of the car, take a look down, we'll actually hunker down a little bit, take a closer look at the really nice type of shoes that this car has. Just in case you've been living under a rock, these are Volk Racing Japanese TE37 wheels. In case you're absolutely close in geography and have absolutely no idea where uh, this place is, it's basically the, the China that makes things that don't break. I've driven enough IS250s and 350s to know the fine line between this and an F car. Uh, these things actually feel like someone actually swapped in a Corvette engine inside a Camry. The V8 just pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls and... All in all, honestly, this car has got to be one of the best bangs for your buck. The reliability, the utility, its, its looks, and most of all, its out-of-the-box power make this one of the most ideal cars that you can actually buy. It's a pretty limited car, so it's something to keep in mind because there's a good chance in the distant future that these cars will begin to compound in value. The only bad thing that I can say about this is this thing is absolutely the epitome anti-Prius. It's, it's absolutely the complete opposite at like 9 miles to the gallon, but that might be a good thing, no? If you guys managed to sit through this entire video, I highly appreciate it. If you guys like this video, give it a like. Subscribe for more random stupid content. Super shout out to my buddy Lum for letting me borrow his cool ISF for this particularly dumb video. He's also a professional Asian, but he's more professional than I am. If you guys are looking for tips and tricks for any car, especially the S2000 and in the ISF community, check out his channel. I'll provide it, high, uh, bleh, I'll provide it here in the link below. Other than that, guys, uh, I got nothing else for you. Have a good day. Be safe. Be good. All that good stuff. See you in the next video. Oh, that's a good intro. What's going on fam squad? Professional Asian out here back with yet another new video. And today, I forgot my line. Division performance of Lexus. It was all about bringing out a performance division in a rather luck last. And while there were a couple of minor upgrades that were involved, like new wheels and suspension setups, the car virtually kind of remained. My microphone's facing the other way. And just in case you are really bad at geography and have no idea where and just in case you're really bad at geography and have absolutely just in case you have no i just in case and uh just in case you're absolutely clueless in geography and have that these wheels are so strong that you could drop 14 atomic bombs on there and volk racing wheels are so strong that even an atomic bomb couldn't bust these bad boys rare japanese wheels which look good on just about almost any car Oh, uh, the ISF, the Evo, we, people put them on Corvettes. Uh, fake Lexuses, fake Ferraris.